Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. Thank you so much for supporting me and this show. Very much means a lot to me because um, we're making Gotham great again. Some of you are new to the channel, and I just wanted The Political Vigilante thing. I'm a big Batman fan, and um, somebody said we're trying to make Gotham great again. I'm not a Trump supporter, very left-leaning, <laughs> socialist, progressive, uh, and I'm just a huge superhero and Batman fan. So the show was originally called the uh, Church of Batman when I first put it out two years ago, but I didn't want uh, legal trouble from the good people at Warner Brothers. So I changed it to Political Vigilante and we say make Gotham great again. So that's what the show is all about. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Progressive Comedy Tour this week, Ron Placone and I are coming to Florida. Get your tickets. January 9th, Gainesville. January 10th, Coral Gables. January 11th, Orlando. That show is almost sold out. January 12th, Jacksonville. The shows, I tell you, they always sell out. So try to get your tickets as soon as you can. Uh, plus, it's 50, most of the shows are like $15 in advance, $20 at the door. So you buy them in advance, save you a couple of bucks. Uh, but go to GrahamElwood.com. And then, of course, I'm going to Chicago in February. We're going to Louisiana in March, Texas in April, uh, Salt Lake City in Boise in May, and the East Coast in June. Ticket links are in there. So check that out. Um, Democrats in Congress unveil ambitious plan to fix our elections. This is in truthdig.com. Well, here we go. <laughs> Instead of just voting yes to PAYGO, uh, the Democrats are kind of waking up and they've now since backpedaled on the, oh, maybe PAYGO wasn't a good idea. Yeah, because we all put pressure on them. If you're going to be a real progressive, we, we got to watch their every move. Just because we voted for them, just because it looks diverse and great, which is all good. I love that there's diversity, but they better be progressives, man better be voting for what we want. So one of the things we need is drastic election reform. We've talked about this at great length on this show and there's no one, there's no silver bullet. There's not like, well, rank choice voting or open primaries. Just one of those will fix it all. Those are both good things, but they're men of one of many things. And I'm gonna go into all the things they're proposing, which is it's really in depth. And the link to the whole article is very detailed. I would suggest reading that over. That's from truthing.com is in the show notes below. So when you're going there to grandma.com to buy tickets to come to Florida, I would also read this article. Get the tickets first, because you don't want to be sold out. Uh, on the second day of the 116th Congress, the new House Democratic majority will introduce HR1, the most comprehensive democratic, uh, excuse me, democracy reform legislation seen this century. Well, that sounds like actual progressives, like not playing the incremental centrism game. Bold from the Democrats? What? Am I reading this? It's not uh, the platitude pragmatism that we've grown to love so much from that party. <laughs> it addresses voting rights, electoral procedures, campaign finance rules, and loopholes, and seeks to initiate higher ethical standards for federal office holders and more. The bill's overall framing is to counter systemic corruption that blocks some citizens but not others from voting or allows large donors to hide their identity while funding attacks they wouldn't publicly want to be associated with or enables current and recent office holders to personally profit from serving the highest levels in the federal government. What? Now many of you might be going, yeah, good luck getting this passed. Um, even though the Democrats have a, a majority of the House, the Senate is Republican. The Senate will vote it down, and I'm sure some corporate Democrats are going to try to say that they're, they're, they'll weasel their way to try to undermine this. Here's why this is important, and I, when I get into the details, it's it's the thing we've been talking about that we're seeing. Sometimes it's not necessary. Obviously, getting this legislation passed is a good thing, but as I've talked about numerous times, sometimes it's just getting the word out. Green New Deal is now being spoken of on the mainstream media. It wasn't. It was something that only like Green Party people and followers would talk about. Now we're hearing it talked about. Election reform. They'd always just get, oh, election reform. It's like what Bernie did with the Stop Bezos Act and Disney, right? He just publicly went out. He just created the Stop Bezos Act. That was never ratified. That's never, that didn't pass. He just said it. He put pressure on Amazon and guess what? 
they raise their wages to $15 an hour. Now we know $15 an hour is not like, yay, it's fixed, everything's solved. Bezos could be giving his employees $25 an hour. He could be giving them full benefits. We all know this. But look with just the pressure. This is the thing you talk about. You got to, uh, we just got to push everything as far to the left as we can. The Republicans have pulled everything to the right and the goddamn corporate Democrats gladly follow them to the right. That's why the Democratic Party is right of center. That's why Bernie Sanders in Europe is a centrist. He's a centrist in Europe, in these countries that have all of these cooperatives and socialized everything, right? So this is why this is important. Just get everyone talking about this is bullshit. We want this fixed. This is how we want to fix it. It because because here's what happens. That we, we saw this leading into the midterms with like Republicans that were running in the midterms. The, their constituents started hearing all of the Medicare for all, you're gonna take away my Affordable Care Act. All of a sudden, all these Republicans who were like, we gotta get rid of Obamacare, were like, well, but we need, we need Medicare for all. They, you saw them start to backpedal. You saw them start to go, oh God, I'm gonna get voted out of here. Everyone agrees we need election reform, everybody. Broadly speaking, H.R. 1 has three main se uh, sections, voting, campaign finance, and ethics. Many of these reforms are to counter barriers erected by the GOP in recent years following the Supreme Court's 2013 gutted of the Federal Voting Rights Act. <laughs> that happened in 2013 when Obama was president. Anybody paying attention to that? We were all at brunch. Was everyone at brunch during that? So here's some of the things that they're passing. The voting site to remove barriers participation by requiring every state to offer online voter registration. That's big. Requiring all states to automatically register every eligible voter. Big. Allowing voter registration at more state and federal government offices. Boom. Same day registration during early voting and on election day. Preventing states using sloppy data mining to purge voters from rolls. Yeah, the Democrats, they're going to try to... Not, <laughs> this is one of their big tactics. Um, preventing states from using returned mail as the basis to purge voters, limiting who can challenge a voter's credentials at polling places. Out, this, is, this is some of the gerrymander, some of the racist tactics they'll use, right? Same day registration, because that's, that's, without it, people, oh, I forgot to register, oh, so I'm not gonna vote. <clears throat> Outlawing distributing deceptive information about the process, this is huge. So if you per print, you know, and now with social media, they can do all, you can vote from your phone. They were trying to do that to just to get like unsuspecting millennials to just, oh, I, can't, I voted. No, you didn't. So if you do that, now that's a crime. That's a good deterrent. Restoring voters' rights to felons after serving their sentences. Now see, see what happened? This got passed in Florida. We talked about this after the midterms where a lot of progressive policies, ballot measures, propositions were voted in some red states, like medical marijuana in Utah. This was voted for felons being able to vote in Florida. So this is big. These are all steps in the right direction, man. It seeks to fortify the integrity of voting and counting process by requiring all states to use paper ballots where votes are counted by hand or scanners because you can hack the electric ones. Requiring provisional ballots will be counted no matter where they are turned in. Yeah, this is how they screwed over progressives in the Democratic primary in 2016, requiring at least 15 consecutive days of early voting for federal elections. That's huge. One Tuesday, a work day, that's crazy. 15 consecutive days of early voting? That's gonna encourage more people to vote. This, we need this in a democracy. The system was designed to keep people from voting. Now, the Democrats like to say that it's only Republicans do, which Republicans do a lot of bullshit, gerrymandering and voter suppression, absolutely. And the Democrats do it to the progressives. The Democrats do it when their corporate dollar donations are gonna get threatened by populist policies, you know. Preventing states from imposing restrictions voting by mail, nice. Making colleges and universities voter registration centers, getting kids involved, outstanding. Requiring the post office deliver mail-in ballots for free, nice. Look at this one. Making election day a federal holiday.
You mean like they do in other countries or they, you, you vote on the weekends? A federal holiday? Like the 4th of July? Like that one where everything's closed and everybody gets to vote? Yeah, that's big. Why do all these people stay home from voting? That's why, they, that's why we have Trump. I'm not a huge fan of voter shaming. A little bit when people do them, but for the most part, the system is designed so you don't vote. So you are too busy. You gotta work three jobs. You can't take Tuesday off from work. The system is too convoluted. This is all to make it easier. Paying for modernized voting systems. Oversight by voting rights. Affirming Congress's right to restore the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which granted the Justice Department veto power over jurisdictions with histories of voting discrimination. LBJ passed that. Affirming the federal government's power to protect Native American voting. Yeah. Now that we have the first two ever Native American Congress people, Maybe, I don't know, get the people who are, it's indigenous, this is their indigenous land, let them vote. I don't know. That seems fair, I guess. Declaring that being an infrequent voter is insufficient ground to be purged. Yeah. This is big. There's a lot more if you read the whole article. But this is definitely a step in the right direction. This is what we need. And even if the like, well, Mitch McConnell will vote this down, then pressure him. Get this out there. Get everybody paying attention to this. Get everybody going, oh, we don't have these things? National holiday? Start getting that. What if, we, what if just the only thing that happened out of all of this, and I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, let's acquiesce and buckle and, and, you know, and, and, buckle and, uh, and let the corporations win or whatever, but just, just for an argument's sake, if the only thing we could get is turning of federal elections into a national holiday, just that alone, what would voter turnout be? Obviously, there's a, all of this stuff is great, but this is why we just gotta push and bang the drum, you know, because this is what we need. We get this passed, more people participate, we're getting better politicians running on better platforms, excuse me, people not backing down. There's a lot of good stuff we're seeing. Long way to go. But we got to take the victories where we can get them. And just proposing this bill is good because this is getting a lot of press and everyone's talking about it. Conservatives, liberals, whatever, which is good. Thanks for watching the show. You can support the show at patreon.com. You can go to grandmelwood.com. I have a PayPal donation. I have a Bitcoin wallet in the show notes. A lot of ways to support the show. And of course, liking, subscribing, and sharing the videos and watching the ads play all the way through in the beginning is a great way to support the show. Thanks for watching.